of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out here in the cold weather. Uh, we have a tough road ahead of us, and uh, we need the Chiefs need all the support of the members. Without the, the member support of the Chiefs, we are nothing, and I truly believe that. My name is, uh, by the way, my name is Trevor Dirty from uh, Beaver First Nation, I'm part of the Northwest Territory Border. What, what we're here today for is to talk about the consultation issues we're having with the Alberta government. Uh, we've been setting, sending a lot of information to the government on the issues of consultation in Bill C-22. We have um, not received anything back that uh, gives us any hope that they're willing to meaningfully consult with us. GDA First Nations and other First Nations of Alberta have provided extensive feedback to the government, none of which has been um, carried on to the consultation. We're sitting here upset that we have no recourse. The only recourse we have is courts, and we want to stay out of courts. The First Nations submitted detailed reviews providing comments in good faith and the expectation that Alberta would honour its commitment to listen to these concerns and develop a policy that was responsive to them and failed to acknowledge uh, and address these concerns. Our members have questions on the new consultation office which will interact with the recently established energy regulator. The policy remains unclear and the First Nation questions on the issue remain unanswered. Um, in regard to the matrices that the government has put out, it is very insulting to the First Nations that they will not consult with us in a proper way. Uh, I would just like to um, I'll say that the young chief that uh, got voted in less than a year ago, my world has uh, opened up to the poisons in this land. And um, we have to stand up, we have to protect our lands. We need some um, real support from our, our Alberta people. When I first got into this position, I, I came into the uh, chief's offices and Listen to the Treaty 8 Chiefs, the Chiefs of Alberta. They are working hard for our members, for our people, for our rights. And we don't see it. I've never seen it before I became a Chief, and I, I'm only now starting to see it. And it's a very valuable lesson for me. And I believe that the way to get our information out is through the media. I'm hoping the media will attend more of our events, our meetings. Has to get out to you guys on what we're trying to do. Um, there's a lot of work being done, it's just that we're not being listened to. That's why we need your support. We need to support people to come up, stand up for the rights of the First Nations. We can't do it ourselves, and the government knows that. The government knows that. And I leave with most of these meetings with a heavy heart, knowing that, with the feeling that not much is being done. But believe me, it is. And it's a very hurtful position to be in. Uh, you know, the, the media, the government, they sure they cast a bad light on the Chiefs. And I, I want to make a point of it. That media come into us, see our meetings, See what we're talking about, listen to our issues, because we're talking behind closed doors and nobody knows what's going on. And, uh, you know, I just, that's why I'm here, to bring the members in, get the media in, get the information out. Thank you. By this province, there is no such thing, in my opinion. 
consultation with a duty to consult in a Supreme Court decision, they have to consult with us. So should we not be writing our own consultation policies instead of someone else trying to write it for us? Enough! And so that's how I look at the consultation policy. I've met with the Aboriginal Minister, he knows my position, he knows that we're going to stick with our own consultation policy for my nation, and he's got to work around it. And if you look at all of the things that are going on, all relevant to land, that is the sad part. That is the sad part because as First Nation people, we respect that land. We use that land to the best of our ability in order for us to sustain ourselves. No one in industry is ever going to understand our connection to the land. And no one should be there to say, we're going to destroy this part, we're not protecting your lake anymore, now I'm talking about bigger bills in the federal government. So when you look at my area, for example, our lake is not protected under the environmental law. So you look at all those things that are happening in our country, the spills and everything else, one on top of the other, and we're not supposed to say anything? That's wrong. It's time we step up to the plate and really move our agenda. Bill 22, the levy, all of a sudden we can't take care of anything. So they're going to create an office here. And it's going to be a flow through on consultation. It's going to be under their matrix. So you look at all of the things that are happening. And the biggest thing for me is the PLAR litigation, the public lands. That's a really insult to our, in front of all of us and we're not doing nothing. You have to get a permit to go on the land. You have to get a permit to go to your trap line. How ridiculous is that? Under the 1930 NRTA, the Natural Resource Transfer Act, it states that they would not interfere with our right to hunt, fish, and trap. That's what it says there. In the Constitution, it also, in Section 35, it states that they respect or they, I, I don't even know what a word respect when it comes to government, I'm sorry. It's just, it's just so disgusting how things are working out for our people. And I want to make sure that when you're being consulted, know your rights. Know where they're coming from and back it up. Because it's important that you do that and we're not just yelling and screaming. Oh, those damn Indians are yelling and screaming again. Enough of that already. We have a valid point. We have a right to the land. We are not the newcomers. We are not the immigrants. Right. We are the But more and more people have to speak out and say it. I am so frustrated as a leader because of the arrogance, the racist, the bigotry, the paternalism, and that whole treatment of First Nation people across this country has to stop. It has to stop. Anyway, I'm going to get carried away up here. I don't know how much time I have. You know what? There's all kinds of things that are happening right now. And I ask, and I not only urge the people to support their leadership, but I also ask the chiefs to make sure that they communicate with the people so they know what's going on. And more the rumors out there is that we're extortionists, we're this and that, we're trying to negotiate a deal. But in Canada's history, and in our backyard, Alberta, one of the richest provinces, they take, they take, they take. And the minute we try to get something in return, they make a profit, so must we. That's, the, that's our land. So when I look at it from that perspective, we have to be more cognizant of what's going on out there. I mean, with Bill 22, they're going to tax the industry. they got to pay a tax. On our behalf, I never gave permission for anybody to negotiate on my behalf. So when you look at it from that perspective, we and once again have that return and someone speaking for us. So that is what has to stop. I just want to say to everybody, I thank you for coming in this cold weather. And I just want to say that no matter what, we will keep fighting. 
we don't have a choice because this, when it comes to the land, that's the last. That's, we need that land. We need the water. We need to protect our waters. And when they don't even tell us if there's a spill, how can you protect? How can you object? So I just wanted to say those, and I thank you all for coming. We support you. Thank you. How are you doing? Good, good. Good. Time to fight. Yes. Oh, no. no, we need to we need to wake them up. I think we need to educate the general public for what's going on. Uh, back home right now, my community is afraid of what's happening, what's coming down the street. Whole time. Spill that's happened to the coal mine spill at uh, almost a uh, billion years of Syria has come down the Athabasca River. You know, the Metaphor itself says that uh, very toxic uh, metals in the water, chemicals that, that's uh, going to destroy our environment. Also, the government is uh, downplaying this. So, once again, they're trying to tell us what's good for us, that we, we shouldn't have to worry about it. But I'm very concerned about my community. We took steps to suffer to try to remind our people by, you know, trying a reverse approach to see to, to accommodate the people so the water, drinking water was, uh, would be free for our people and community. The northern stores back home were blue uh, lane water for us, almost 10 bucks a jug of water. And now, Thinking that we had we had that covered, now we're gonna to have to deal with the spill. We don't know what's in there. Once it gets into the delta, it's gonna be there for years. What are the long term effects? My concern about our drinking water. You know, okay, the government failed to consult, failed to notify us of what's happening. Uh, they they don't have their act together because if the medical health officer say concern, why is the government saying the same thing?